Welcome back, everyone. Paul Tranny here with the one and only Stan Rapp. Yay! Say hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Stan's gonna. Stan, the man's gonna be with us. Uh, we have you for uh, two hours. We're gonna do a little UX, UI design. Is that the plan? Yeah. That is. Sounds good to me. Want to welcome everybody. Also, uh, want to thank Andrea as well for diving into the XD Daily Creative Challenge. So we're continuing that theme into doing some UX UI design as well. Does that sound good? Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's do that. So uh, yeah, welcome Stan. Say hello to him. Love to hear from you as well. Just chime in. Be like, hey, what's up? Because we like we want to talk to people. I don't know about you, but I'm always in front of my computer just talking to myself. And it's nice to actually talk to people like Noor and Nick and Lindsay as yeah. well. Somebody recognized my epic hoodie. Thank you so much. Ooh, <laughs> I'm into that, dude. I didn't even actually notice it till now. Wow, that's awesome. I like that epic hoodie. I decided, like, this is a special day for epic hoodie. It is special. It's, like, so appropriate. Um, but yeah, we want to hear all about you and everything. Uh, and also welcome everybody else, Pedro and everyone. You have a little bit of an accent, but you're also wearing a hoodie. So you, that kind of says that you're from, that you live in San Francisco. That's what the hoodie tells me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely already a San Francisco outfit. No Patagonia jacket, but like. No Patagonia, yeah. but you have the hoodie and you probably have some casual. Those are nice shoes. Thank you. Thank He's you. dressed to impress, folks. <laughs> nice white shoes. Okay. Yeah. So, hello everyone. My name is Stan Rob, and as you can hear from my weird accent, I am from Ukraine. Oh yeah. And yeah, I always like to make jokes of that. And if you want to learn more about Ukrainian accent, you can always watch this very old movie with Arnold. It's called Red Heat, and basically he has the same accent I have. Yeah. And the next thing when I say that I am from Ukraine, the next question I always get is like, have you been to Chernobyl? Because right now this TV show is like so popular. So my answer is yes. I took this photo seven years That's ago. That's his apartment, his old apartment. This is on the, <laughs> the fourth floor there, the one with the window open. Just kidding. So, so this location is like very popular. You saw this in different computer games and in the recent TV show from HBO. Yeah, Chernobyl. I've, I've yet to see it. So, but this is so funny. So this is the first thing when they they hear you're from yeah, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. It's especially right now this. TV show is like very popular. It's already ended, but still it's like a hot topic and it's like, have you been there? Is it like safe? Can he go there? So yeah. my answer is yes, you can go there. Yes, it's official. Yes, it's safe until you follow the rules. Otherwise, yeah, it might be a little bit. Don't go licking the pavement. Yeah, definitely. Imagine. Don't go somewhere else because. Just period, don't go licking pavement at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just follow your guide all just the time. Just follow the guide. But I hear it is actually like you do see sort of like life coming from Chernobyl like, so, these days. I could be wrong. You can tell me more. Uh, definitely. So right now, this is like a very special area because you need to get some sort of permission to go inside. And inside, it's like. Very unique space. You can imagine a huge city designed for probably 70,000 people mm -hmm. and it's completely abandoned. It's like empty, ghost city. And I don't know, this is a unique place, unfortunately, because of like sake of different events, but still it's like amazing. And if there is a way for you to go there, I strongly advise. And like you said, just obviously like pretty surreal. Uh, city side, 70,000 70, people used to live there and it's totally vacant and obviously like like this and everything, which is fascinating. I don't know if anybody else is from Ukraine out there. We could have somebody else from Ukraine. Yeah, right so somebody mentioned that, yeah, Lana Studley. Hey, looks like she's from Ukraine. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, oh, Lana? Yeah. Oh, hi, uh, Zemalak? Yeah, this means that we are from the same country. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Lana, welcome. Good to have you here. So Fantastic. I guess we will learn, oh, Belarus. Belarus. Yeah, not far, neighbors. Uh, very neighbors. close, okay. So let's go. Uh, right now I work as a director of design here in San Francisco at a company called Canvas. And to give you a little bit more about what Canvas, what problem are we trying to solve? So in the United States, basically there are two ways of owning a car, lease and loans. And 
we realized that those aren't flexible. You don't want like to sign two year agreement or, or five year agreement. You don't want to drive the same car. And with mm -hmm. Canvas, we basically create a flexible alternative to yeah owning a car. Basically, you can swap cars, you can adjust your mileage, lots of cool things. Okay, and so it's like very much more flexible definitely. in terms of like having a vehicle. Yeah, this. for okay. example, for the for the summer, well, not in San Francisco, but in every other city you can go with convertible. During the winter you can swap into like SUV, up to you, completely up to you. And here comes my shameless, yeah, small slide. It's yeah. very important. We are hiring. <laughs> There we are. <laughs> so, Drivecanvas.com. Yeah. yeah, please visit our website. We are looking for product designers, UX researchers, and yeah, we are growing a lot. No, man. We really appreciate that. By, by, by all means, like, plug it. We appreciate you uh, being here and letting us know that there are jobs out there for people like us. That's why we have the daily creative challenges. Like, get involved, make stuff, get better, get hired. So, cool. Very and, cool. And by the way, Mm, director of design means that probably I'm not designing that a lot at this moment, but at the same time, I'm doing a lot of hiring and a lot of product direction, visions, and collaboration with other teams. So please feel free to ask me everything about how to collaborate with product managers, engineers, different other departments, I don't know, customer support, marketing, and all of the stuff. Uh, you can ask me a little bit about how to get a job at a different place. I know that we have portfolio reviews as a different part mm -hmm. of this. So unfortunately, no portfolio reviews, but I guess I can ask some basic questions, mm -hmm. uh, answer some basic questions when it comes to, yeah, how to land your dream job. Mm -hmm. uh, Into it. Do you have your dream job today for mm, the most part? Yes. Uh, actually, yeah. it's at Canvas. So. Yeah, it is, a canvas, <laughs> right? Exactly. That's where your dream job is. So, I have only one sticker because this is very, very, like, yeah, oh, important for me. And basically, it says canvas. This is the first sticker I put on my laptop for probably 10 years. Wow, that's so, commitment. Yeah, that's... That's showing commitment. That's the best wow. indicator. I am <laughs> happy to be a part of this company. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't promote it like, hey, go, come and work for us. So, yeah. <laughs> so, the topic of today. Design for any screen. And today we were we are going to explore responsive feature inside of Adobe XD. And I actually created a real world task, a real world design we need to actually design today and tomorrow. I will explain about that in a second. So here is a small plan for today and tomorrow. Today I want us to focus on wireframing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, tomorrow it will be more about adding quality, building responsive, and prototyping. In the same time, I want to make it crystal clear that potentially I will jump back and forth. Probably we will start doing some responsive even today. Okay. So yeah, this is like for basic set of expectations. And Very let cool. me switch into Adobe XD and actually tell you a little bit more about what we are going to do. So let me tell you, oh, wow, that's my portfolio there. Yeah. Link. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Voodoo Val, for sharing that. So check out his work, but you do have him live right here. But again, just a, a way to kind of brag about him and his experience. I'm super to have, f happy to have you here as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, love your website. I love that you're going to talk about, um, I like actually how you call this trials. Because basically it's it. All the time you're trying like to prove to yourself that, yeah, you're Look doing Look at all it. the trials and all the difficulty I've had, but eventually <laughs> I delivered. I eventually <laughs> delivered on all these projects. Oh yeah, I've won some awards along the way, of course. Creative Jam. Oh. 2018. Look at that. Was that here in San Francisco? Oh, no, it was in Salt Lake City. So I moved oh, okay. initially to Salt Lake City, spent one year there and yeah. As you can see, I already added Adobe Live Host for 2019 <laughs> because, because I'm kind of proud to be here. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah, <laughs> well, we're super happy to have you here. And I'm happy to see how you're kind of tackling all this stuff. I think it's too easy to jump in and start pushing pixels around, if you will, and like adding pretty colors. But I think what you're dealing with is, like it says here on your intro screen, you know, a real life project, real, real world problems and different things. Uh, Lena's asking what you're looking for in a UX UI person. That oh. might be a... I don't know if that's a... So this is well, this is a very deep question, and I believe every manager will tackle this in a different way because every company is looking for something different. But 
I would like to suggest to focus on soft skills because in the end of the day, your best design tools is collaboration, communication, and ability to provide feedback. And when people ask me like, what's the best design book? I would say that, hey, focus on something, how to communicate, how to deliver feedback. There are lots of examples when people that are completely outside of design industry, but still they're really great leaders because being a great designer, it's less about pushing pixels and it's more about being collaborative, being supportive, ability to establish some sort of meaningful connection with your different stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, I would say still start from pushing pixels because yeah. in the beginning of your career, it's very important to see quick results of mm -hmm. your work. And if you will read a book about like collaboration or communication, you will say, okay, I read it. Mm -hmm. How can I apply it? And still everyone is making decisions basically about your skill set based on your portfolio. So I'm just saying that you need to balance your technical skills with soft skills. And right. in, yeah, in the end of the day, I still believe that most of the managers will make a decision based on your soft skills. Okay. Yeah, I agree. It's like you, you have you could have two people that are equally qualified for the job. It's probably going to be the person with the soft skills, somebody that's like easy to get along with, that gets you, you know, all those things. Because so you got to spend a lot of time with these people, even the people that you hire. I got to like you as a person oh. since I got to <laughs> hang out with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is good, which is probably why what's made you successful. You seem easy to get along with. I don't know about this accent. He didn't have an accent before we started rolling, <laughs> by the way. I am just in <laughs> <laughs> But again, just those soft skills. So thank you so much for mentioning that into it. And approve. Yeah. Oh. And I want today actually to present one project to you. So this is a real project. I worked on it before. And yeah, it's about home furniture e-commerce store. And why I want to focus also on this project because there were some set of limitations from the very beginning. Because you need to understand that design. I, I like this definition of design. When you solve a problem, considering all of the limitations. All the time, there will be a lot of limitations. And I believe this is like the main role of a designer, try to figure out all of those things that limit your solution and mm -hmm. be sure that, yeah, you will design according to those like guidelines mm -hmm. somebody established. And yeah, I will showcase all of those limitations in a second. But yeah, I just want to make focus on this. This is like full real life project. And actually, if you will go to my Behance case, you will see this project I created some time ago with a friend of mine. We also worked together on this project. He is an amazing designer. Yeah, this one. The first one? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, ooh, room ideas for overstock.com. Yeah, yeah. The only one thing, so we did a little bit more pretty project for Behance when it comes to uh, UI, but uh, the same functionality is basically here. And yeah, I will address in a second what's the main idea behind this project. Mm -hmm. And just a, a quick couple housekeeping yeah. things, by the way. Uh, welcome, everybody. Feel free to follow Stan. Again, info, follow him. That's where you can check out the projects. Hang out with us live. But we also have this challenge going on. So we'll review these in about 90 minutes. Um, and we're going to be designing a music creation app. At least that's what we will be reviewing. And then we're going to do a random giveaway in about 15 minutes as well. So that's, that's the housekeeping stuff. Cool. But yeah, we'll just so, switch back to your screen, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, final, final note. I will repeat this during today's stream and tomorrow's stream. Feel free to ask questions, and I believe it's my duty to help you, to support you in every possible way when it comes to design. So yeah, don't be shy. Ask me anything. Yeah. All so right. let's move. Gladly. So problem. Ooh. <laughs> Should That's I go? Okay. No, we could. We'll we'll work it out once we get there. This is actually done in XD, though. By the way, yes, these slides. yes, exactly. I decided to build small prototype inside to go from slide to slide. Yeah. So let me explain about this problem. Uh, yeah, I mentioned that only a small percentage of people truly know what they are looking for. When we are thinking, okay, I need to buy a sofa, there are a lot of limitations, starting by your apartment size, starting mm. by your existing room style, even by materials. Maybe you 
sometimes you might be allergic to some of those materials. Mm -hmm. And every time actually we will go online to search for a sofa, we will get something like very transactional. Basically, you will see lots of sofas on the internet mm -hmm. without any some sort of advisor who will help you to make the best choice. And yeah, I believe that this, I have mentioned this, that instead of, instead of inspiring me as a like user of e-commerce shop, I see most of like transactional mindset when I see sofa, 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 price, 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 mm -hmm. and still no one helps me to make the right choice. And yeah, that's why I want to focus on creating some sort of supportive tools that will help us to find the dream sofa of my life and yeah, to make the best possible decision. I just want to showcase how the average e-commerce website looks like. Mm -hmm. And like, you don't know anything about these sofas. They look nice on this image. But let's be honest, happened at least a lot of times with people I know. Mm -hmm. You buy something like that, you bring it back to your apartment. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's huge. And you're like, damn. <laughs> then it completely mismatch your existing style. Mm -hmm. And you're like, damn, number two. Or like fabrics, you don't like them and you want to try something different, but you thought it will be different. So lots of all of those issues, or maybe even Feel, co color. Yeah, Feel free to pick your favorite, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, I am, I'm kind of making decisions right now. I'm not even thinking about the size of the sofa right now. I'm just like, oh, I kind of like the middle top one. And then you will face this weird situation when you will order that one, it will arrive and you will realize that your front door uh -huh. is, is very narrow and you can't actually bring that sofa inside of your apartment. This is, it's surprising, but a lot of people return items because of that problem. Interesting, okay. It's like one of the most like top reasons for return. I, I I believe that. I literally saw a post the other day and it was probably like on Reddit or something, but the delivery people brought a sofa, they just left it out, they couldn't fit it through the door, so they just left it on the porch. Said good luck with that. Yeah, yeah it's thing. like, my job is to deliver it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, care. I'm not gonna set it up for you. Uh, Voodoo Vala, I agree, I like the Chelsea and I like the Briar. Those are exactly my two favorite as well. Mm. Just talking about the different sofas. Uh -huh. Which one do you like? Briar, definitely. Looks so good. Yeah, it uh, does. And surprisingly, Hobson. Actually, not surprising. I, I just like... Uh -huh. Looks to me like Scandinavian style, probably mid-century modern okay. style. Yeah. Yeah. Giuliano agrees with you. And actually, that one seems more comfortable. Also, the Hughes. Like, when you're talking comfort, the Lewis sofa might be more comfortable and the Hughes sofa would be pretty comfortable. Also, that. But I'm just judging like the picture. I like this picture. This one's really cool. Comfort's a whole other. So again, just taking in other considerations is all I'm thinking about. So I have a problem. I have a cat and my cat destroys all of the furniture. Ah. That's why I need something like cat resistant. Yeah. <laughs> or you, you get a sofa that matches your cat. So the cat hair blends in with the sofa. Uh, Is that a thing that works? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Maybe we could ask uh, Lee Cooper on, uh, you know, what do you do in picking a sofa uh, if you have a cat? Nick <laughs> ask a question. What is Design Sprint? So I'm not Google and probably Google will answer this question in a better way. To be honest, I even don't know who invented Design Sprint. I know that Google Ventures popular, they wrote a book about Design Sprint mm -hmm. and basically what Design Sprint is, they use the frame of five days when you move from a problem statement to testing a prototype. For each of those five days, there is some sort of different activities you need to participate with different stakeholders. And yeah, on the last day, you basically invite potential users or existing users who will test your solution. I guess the question is, do designers need to know how to do design sprints? And I would say yes and no. For probably agencies and freelance designers, this is a big thing because it's like limited to five days and it's a good thing. But mm -hmm. for product, design, product designers, it's a little bit different because you basically do product sprints every time. Sometimes you have five weeks, sometimes you have like 20 days to do it. And that's why you might allocate more time on like first stage or like second stage. So mm -hmm. 
I would say definitely read a book. It's a really good book. It's not that like it won't take a lot of time. In the mm -hmm. same time, it's like it, inciting. Is the uh, the general idea for these sprints is to basically get feedback as fast as possible? Yes. That's so kind of the gist of it. It's like uh, no. you're going Not from problem statement. You are firstly defining the problem. Then you explore all of the potential solutions. Then mm -hmm. you pick the most promising. And then you actually test the most promising. I would say this is like pretty much the same design thinking, but just narrowed down into specific exercises, activities mm -hmm. you need to perform. And yeah, test with and the real users. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally going to sound like I'm, I'm someone that works for Adobe, but um, like in terms of having XD to be able to turn around to send somebody a link and say, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this interaction? Like getting people's feedback as fast as possible. Yeah, and to be honest, I believe this is what design is about. Yeah. Show your progress early and often, get feedback, improve, iterate over and over again. Design mm -hmm. is never done, so. Yeah, it means we're, we're always going to have a job. This design is never done. Yeah, it's something good for us because yeah. nowadays, like lots of those like different AI technologies, and yeah, I thought, damn, one day somebody can replace it. Huh? Yeah. No. No, <laughs> no. It's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Guess what? You're still going to be working, so don't, you're not going to be lounging on a couch. All right, so far, it looks like, uh, yeah. The next thing limitations. So let me tell you. What's this? These are the real life breakpoints and what what we did before when I worked on this project. So uh, engineering team gave us these numbers and they said that you need to design both sizes for, for example, 320. I mean, create a screen. Super and, small. And also, yeah, for this is like iPhone. Is that, the width? is that the width? Yeah, exactly. OK. And they said, try to scale this to 569. And we designed also this resolution, basically the same functionality, but for this resolution. And they give us all of these things. And we designed all of these, I mean, left values. But they said, no, you also need to design right values as well. And it took us basically a lot of time just scaling elements. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, this is like a, not the best like investment of my time, because I am like not wasting, but spending a lot of time just resizing elements. And in Adobe XD, there is this amazing responsive feature. So what I will try to do. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see. I will try to design all of these like left value resolutions and using responsive feature. And when you say left value, do you mean like minimum, minimum yeah. and maximum? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. And yeah, we will try to So you're just going to make sure everything fits, kind of like a sofa. You're going to bring exactly. that in, make sure it fits in your room. And maybe you want to, maybe you get a larger room. Is that couch still going to fit? Is it responsive? No. <laughs> Not that I know of. That would be awesome. Yeah. Brr, pull it out. It's a little longer. Digital know. design is so good. You can scale everything, unfortunately. Nothing's ever done. You get to fix things on the fly, kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I just yeah. like that. I like that it's not necessarily print, because once you send it to the printer, I'm sorry. That's it. You wash your hands of it. It's done. It's great. Also, if you misspelled something. Also, we have this mindset that we can actually fix our things. Even if it will uh, fail somewhere, still there are different iterations where you can fix things. But let's say I'm building an actual building. Mm -hmm. I'm designing it. Once it will be built, there is no way for me to fix it. It's already there. And that's why being a digital designer, yeah, there are lots of benefits. Yeah. Into so, it. That's what you want. So, um, then, huh? yeah. yeah just kind of taking no things. Uh, but yeah, let's let's kind of move through this. I want to make sure we get to like designing and stuff. I don't mean to slow you up too much because we could probably reference this deck later on as well. Yeah. Right? So this is actually the last slide. Ideas. So because I did some homework and I invested some time into creating this actual feature, we thought that we can allow our customers to shop by room. For example, I want to see all of the furniture for my living room. I don't want to see all of their like furniture for my bathroom, for example. Completely not the case. I don't know. I'd be impressed if you have furniture in your bathroom. Yeah. I'm like, where do you live in a mansion? <laughs> I got I have I think I have one seat in my bathroom. I think you know which one that is. Yeah. Okay, continue. <laughs> Shop by style. Uh, surprisingly a lot of people take a lot of attention to the existing style of their own. For example, I True. have mid-century modern bedroom and I want to continue that style. That's why I don't want to see all of the furniture that is completely unrelated. Shop by color. Let's say my bedroom is gray. 
And I want to continue that trend. That's why I want to see all of the rooms. And again, shot by the color of your cat. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> Still need to hear Lee if your if your cat matches your sofa. Need to know. And so yeah, shot by material. This is actually a really good idea. Do that. So those question marks in the bottom, I expect you will contribute to this functionality because I don't want to stop on these four items I outlined here and please feel free to come up with different ideas. We mm -hmm. already kind of have ideas shot by material, we have an idea shot by size of your furniture. Mm -hmm. So might be everything. Shape, all that stuff. Basically this is the last that's Slide. good, and this is really like, again, uh, relating it to a sprint, like, here's all these different options, let's test this stuff out, let it get it narrowed down to some of the best possible options, you know, maybe not fit, fit what's the word I'm looking at, not feed everything to um, the uh, the viewer at once, yeah. like the paradox of choice, that sort of thing, so. So, yeah, our goal, I have this presentation here, our first breakpoint we need to design is 320, to 569. So I'm going to design for 320 and then using responsive feature I want to scale it to 569. Hopefully it will work. Yeah, let's well, do it. Uh, I did some homework and I believe you can do that as well. And that's why, yeah, I have some preparation. I like it. Yeah, Thanks. shot by budget. Thank you, Claude. Welcome, my buddy. Good to see you here. Uh, let's actually shop check. Up, shop by brand. That's good. Ooh, it works. Ah, Perfect. show people what you did because it's gonna blow your mind. So, uh, or th more likely the stuff you didn't have to do. Yeah. Because it just did it. Uh, be sure <sighs> to enable this thing. And right over there, do you see? Yeah. Responsive resize. And from there, boom. Like what usually happens? It gets all scrunched up. We can actually, I guess, I can. You can turn that off, yeah, for one, if you want to. Again, you don't need to show it off, but either way. So this is something really amazing. And that's why I want to focus on this functionality because it saves a lot of time. And probably it can resize like everything properly, but for 80, 90% mm -hmm. of your, t you can save 80 to 90%. Just, just enough. So you feel like you're doing something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, I'm contributing. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to wireframe today most of the screens and outline the basic functionality. So in the beginning, it will be mostly different gray boxes to ensure that we have all of the functionality. So, and another thing, I will try to focus to make this pixel perfect because yeah, our ultimate goal to hand all this to engineers and engineers hate half pixels or like different values. That's why we will use eight pixel grid and we will try to mm -hmm. yeah, basically limit to those sizes. So I'm- Ooh, good job. Sorry. Claude also brought up another point. Uh, curated collections. Ooh. So like, hey, what do the experts say for this? So let Into me- Into it. Um, uh, the comment below that one, can't read it, don't know what it says. So cool. What is, oh, it says cool? Yeah, in oh. Russian. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and thank you so much for typing in chat. In 15 seconds, we're gonna dive into chat and win. Uh, no. So, probably, well, probably a big size, but, but let me show keys. No. You're, yeah, I want to hear all about this. Like you're using your keyboard a lot, which is nice. Uh, yeah, all the time, if you use any tool, spend some time learning hotkeys. It will, it, in the beginning it will be like, why do I need to do that? But if you're going to design for years, mm -hmm. I guess it will save two, three months of your life after mm -hmm. designing like for two years, basically. It's so yeah. true. That's why all the time invest your time into learning different hotkeys. Yes, you should all learn the hotkey for chat and win and essentially entering content into chat. So we're gonna dive into that right now. Let's we're gonna dive it. into our chat and win right now, folks. Let's do it. 
Say something in chat, and that's how you enter. Welcome back, everybody. Those fireworks say it's time for chat and win. So does that video. So just say something in chat. Be like, oh, what's up? I would, I want a beige sofa. Is that what we're giving away? Is that what it is for chat and win? Is it a so? Oh, I wish. Who knows? <laughs> That'd be so nice. Uh, we're going to give you 100 stickers. So yes, they can be pictures of sofas. Uh, either way, 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. Just say something in chat like hello, like hi again, like Anna's doing. And that's how you enter to uh, win. So thank you so much for doing that. And we'll pick a name at random. In fact, like we've done right now, congratulations, Anna. Anna, Angelica, Oscar. We're fast. She's on it. Everybody wants to win. That's what she says. And you know what? She's won. 100 stickers from Sticker Mule. Congratulations. Decorate your laptop. Uh, again, super easy and kind of inspiring to just design something, quite frankly. Um, but not to worry, everybody else can get, uh, what, 10 stickers for a buck? Just kind of super, super easy. So just use that code that's shown above. Just a way for us to say thank you for hanging out with us, uh, Daria and Jordan and everyone, especially Stan Rapp right here. Oh, thank you so much. Look, he's, he has one sticker. One sticker. Whoa, not too many. Just joking. <laughs> but I know I'm people, th you. they have like laptops fully colored. Yeah. With like several it's, layers. It's all <laughs> such a personal <laughs> opinion. It's such a personal thing. Mine's that technically I have one as well. It just uh, happens to be. Actually, the reason for me, my wife, she has the same laptop. And I thought I need to create a way to distinguish. Differentiate? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's funny. Because Purely it's like you need to open. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not, not mine. mine. Oh, I don't, want, well, yeah. I don't mean to pry, wife, but you, you know. So, Wrong laptop. Let's go. Yeah, so let's do it. I am going to create guidelines. You need, you can do that. You need to hover here, and basically you will see this section here. And this means that you can start pulling guidelines. I will use 24 pixels from each side. This will be my border. And now let's adjust this to fit into the screen. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use the? Uh the grid option? Yeah, I use this. So why I'm not going to use specifically for mobile, because it perfectly works. I mean, grid perfectly works for bigger resolutions. But in my personal opinion, for mobile, it's more about just spacing from left and right. And that's why probably you don't need a lot of columns to have. But again, this is my personal opinion. And it's up to you how to do this. But and let's be sure that everything is divisible by 8. So below, I'm going to have some sort of big image to showcase different collections of rooms. And mm, I need some specific proportion. Let's divide this by 4 and multiply by 3. Yeah. Uh, no. It's like, let's do something like that. And below, let's showcase all of the functionality we have for this specific feature. And I mentioned before that I want to create a solution shop by room, shop by style, and by color by default, and something, something else you will propose. So rooms. Mm -hmm. Let's switch into this one. Was the room ideas and inspiration, was that from Claude, his feedback? Uh, or were you kind of thinking that? So I just want to put some sort of header on this page okay. to let people know what this page is about. And here will be an image preview of different rooms. So yeah, to give them an idea what this website is about. Because I guess so this is the main idea of every page, to give people an idea what they can expect from this functionality. That's why I mm -hmm. have this thing. Um, so I'm going to, this will be images of different rooms. So we have 12 pixel space. And I really like about this Adobe XD because basically those pink guidelines always tell me like that the spacing is right. This mm -hmm. is 
Cool yeah, show. you uh, you don't even have to think about it, you know, which is nice. So, 24, oops. Thank you so much, Video Val, for talking about the design feedback countdown, which is the clock you see opposite of us. That's all about the challenge. So you can always check out that challenge tab. We'll review that. 53 minutes. And actually, for this, element rooms, rooms, I want to make it a little bit different. I want to make it like that. So our customers will be able to pick popular furniture by rooms. Uh, next will be style. And here comes the biggest problem with styles. People mm. don't know the exact style they have. And most of the time you will have some sort of style. It might be mid-century modern, mm -hmm. or it might be modern, or it might be coastal. So there are like, I prepared this thing to showcase the amount of styles mm -hmm. of furniture that are available. And yeah. so it's not a surprise for me. Most of the people don't know that there are so many styles or they don't know how to differentiate, for example, Scandinavian from mid-century modern. Like boho? I don't know what boho style is. Bohemian. Oh, bohemian. Mm, interesting. It's like fancy thing. <laughs> it is fancy. So that's why I want to create some sort of a section that will actually help customers to understand uh, what style they need. Let me do something like this. Yeah, and also I would want to know, like, honestly, like, popular. What are the popular sofas? Yeah, so we will yeah. address that. It's almost like re like recommendations from experts, and then, mm -hmm. you know, the popular. As in music, you have Oops. the recommended music, and then like what everybody's actually listening to, which is just a bunch of Taylor Swift. <laughs> so I want to know this. What's the Taylor Swift of sofas? Sort of thing. Let's do that. <laughs> So let me... Emmanuel says, thanks for working on e-commerce design, which sounds kind of scary, but like so many things are e-commerce, I feel like. Well, Everybody is kind of selling something. Yeah, nowadays this is a hot topic and I totally get it because you can basically create a website and go online and get customers from around the world in like, I don't know, four hours to spend time to build your website, yeah. to upload your inventory. And here you are. And yeah. now you're like self Entrepreneur, let's go that way. Yeah, you're like yeah. self-employed. Yeah. You're the president of the business. And for those of you who don't know, we're actually working in Adobe XD. Um, constantly has updates. We'll probably talk about the various updates. I'm so glad you're focusing on like responsive design um, as well as like the content itself, like what to actually drop in there. So let's And if you're new here, feel free to chime in. Uh, Andrej Kobielka, good to have you here. Not sure where you're from, interesting name. Love to hear if you're new and also where you're from. So this section, this will be kind of a quiz that will help me to understand, yeah, about mm -hmm. the style I prefer. Let's color it for now. We don't need border. Just some sort of, let's do. Mm. And that's good to have at the bottom of the page. You went over all this stuff and you realize how clueless you are about sofas, <laughs> you know? Which is I, good. Absolutely. Right, so, Bo the boho style? I think you made up that word. Let's go to, well, I need some style help. <laughs> no, that is actually real. Definitely. Right? Yeah. But yeah, so, it is real, And but I'm like totally like, so I decided to put it here next to actually styles because people very quickly will realize, oh damn, I don't know what's that. And that's why I decided to put it next to each other. Actually, let me, I forgot we need some copy here. Oops. Oh, from Czech Republic. Awesome. Close to Ukraine. And I agree, Noor mentioned the font you're using as well, which I really do like in Montserrat. So I'm really this into is, it, like as you're working on it. Is that what, yeah, tell this us. This is my favorite, I'll is be it? honest. Yeah, first of all, typography is not my strongest skill, <laughs> but, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> well, you, I feel like you know what looks good at least, even though you say you're not, you, it's not your strong suit. So it's still a good job. I work with very talented designers at Canvas and 
I mean, my title, design director, it means that I need to teach everyone how to do design, but at the same time, I'm privileged and very lucky to learn from my colleagues. So that's why, yeah, they contributed a lot to my education, probably even oh, yeah. more than I contributed to their education. But yeah, basically, one of our designers here is extremely talented when it comes to different fonts and typography in general. So he told me about those things. That's good. I feel like it, like everybody everybody has something they can teach someone else and then everybody could always learn from someone else. And you being in the environment you're in, you get to learn from some awesome people. And uh, yeah, it's just only gonna make you better, you know. So I in fact, yeah, even the less the less you know, you know, the more you end up learning. You're actually in a better place if you don't know a lot about an industry because you get to grow a lot, I guess. So whether you're new or experienced. I believe it's also really cool to be a designer right now. There are so many materials, there are so many tools to create interfaces right now. I mean, Photoshop is here for years, but still the idea behind the Photoshop is a little bit different. Uh, Adobe XD, here we are, this is like one of the best tools to create different user interfaces. Yeah. And just imagine, a few years ago, there, there were no such tools. And it was and, like... And you're just kind of resigned to the fact that this is how I have to do things. I have to figure out the spacing between these two boxes. Like, I remember using Photoshop. Did you ever, like, draw a box? Exactly. All in, the time. in between those two boxes yeah. and then move it over? <laughs> like, and you're just resigned with, to doing things that way. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> I mean, nowadays it's like design is a breeze. It saves so much time, all of those tools here, and yeah. As far as we know, we don't have to tell clients how easy it is, because they don't need to know. So let me grab those styles, because I don't want to type all of them. Ooh. And, uh... For those that are listening, we are also playing some music in the background um, from DJ J Phils. I don't know what would your what's the what's your DJ name? <laughs> you need to think of a DJ name. We got a new DJ here, DJ Phils. So I'm, J Phils. I will go with Boho since you like it. I know, because I don't know what it is. I'm like, you just made that word up. No, it's again Bohemian, but I have no idea how it will look. Oh, I know, it's like golden metallic things. I don't know even how to describe it. It's, <laughs> it's just... I know I know Bohemian. Like, I visualize something very, very earthy and like kind of hippie-like Bohemian stuff. I get it. I just never heard it called Boho. What's up, Khalid? Good to have you here. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jake. That's a good name. Like it, keep them coming. We have music <laughs> playing in the background, by the way. In here, it's a little quiet, but there's music playing in the background. We're missing the vibe. Oh. So, I was told to not dance on stream before, like Paul. No. No? Uh, Just because I can't. So, limitations everywhere. No, yeah, no limitations. Dance. Keep the dancing to a minimum. And we want to duplicate this. And DJ Phils. And love it. Color. And actually for color we will use a little bit different. If yeah. if anybody's like been through this process of buying a sofa recently, like this is I'm totally curious. Like I did yeah, this. Yeah, please share like your experience. A year ago I went through a whole thing and I'm very I have an opinion about all the stuff. Hello Ramez. Hello, good to have you here. Welcome. Feel free to hang out with us. It is our very first day with Stan Rapp from mm -hmm. Canvas, who's also hiring. So learn some of these tips and then sneak those words into your interview you have at Canvas <laughs> or into your resume. Maybe your resume or in your portfolio, it has a e-commerce, how to pick a sofa. And you'd be like, oh, I know where we, I know where you got that. So I have this <coughs> question mark to set some mood for this section. And Ooh, I wait, where did that? That graphic is awesome. So 
to be honest, I don't know. So my friend, I guess, created this 3, 3D model. If you will go to my Behance profile, you will see that there are two projects and one of them is with Alexi. So Alexi basically designed all of these wonderful 3D models. Oh, Alexi? Yeah. And Very yeah, cool. he told me how to do most of the designs, so. Like, told you how to make those 3D assets? Yeah, as well. Okay. So he's really good. And he's teaching students in, back in Ukraine, like how, yeah, how to do design. So let's have good friends, man. Talented friends. Let me actually, so I saved some images uh, in advance and let me showcase how this will look. I need something, something beautiful for what color image. You're doing like such a good job with the design, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> well, and I'm not just like, you know, just complimenting you just because you are our, our guest. <laughs> but it's it's like all about showing off the product, right? Well, we it's need not about the design. It's about like, the, you know, the images. We need to be honest, most of the time when people buy online, it's about showcasing the item they're going to buy. And most of the e-commerce solutions, they're doing a poor job. They have like very low fidelity images or like oh. we 3D renders. That's why I believe you need to showcase the actual, yeah. Image. What is it? So in terms of uh, just like competition and stuff like that out there, there is, gosh, what uh, what e-commerce site? Um, oh, I can't think of it. Uh, I don't know if it, it might be Wayfair. Might allows be. you to select a 3D viewing experience or a ver uh, augmented reality uh, experience so you uh, point to the corner of the room where you want to picture the sofa and it gives you the 3D like sofa within that space. So you kind of visualize it. Does that make sense? I believe this is the future. And in the future it will be some sort of completely like VR experience when you wear a helmet and yeah, you just walk. And just running into things. It's because you have this helmet on. <laughs> so color and uh, I want actually to add one additional functionality I really like, and let me explain that. Shop by a specific item. Uh, let me use 32 pixels. Let me explain that. Let's imagine that you have an item from, a, I don't know, from your grandma, and this is like very old fashioned sofa. And you know that this is the piece of furniture you really like and you want yet yeah, to build actually the whole room around this item. So I want to create a functionality that will allow me to say, I have a sofa, it's orange, and I believe it's like has this style and please show me all of the room interiors with this similar item so I can, yeah, renovate mm -hmm. my apartment and build and all of the interior around this item. Mm -hmm. So let's call this uh, shop by item for now. We will improve this. And let me quickly. Yeah, I like, I like that. You have your, you know, your sort of, your showcase piece, uh, potentially. So I will show. Tyler, Tyler Yates, is there a way to make text have no padding or margin, like an HTML element? Uh, not necessarily. It actually doesn't have any padding to begin with, by the way. So don't consider it using like divs and text elements. Um, consider it more freeform. Uh, let me showcase also this thing, what I just did. I created one rectangle, square actually, and duplicated it. Don't do that way. I am old fashioned, but right now again, tools allow us to create much better things. Oh yeah. Does everybody see that? 
Mm. Khalid, I think you know of that, but maybe Nor doesn't. You did a repeat grid. Exactly. Use all of those functionalities. Again, unfortunately, I'm old enough. I have a lot of years in design, and when I learned design, there were no such tools like this one, but yeah. all the time I do something in that old-fashioned way, I think, damn, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> Some smart people thought about how to yeah. streamline this process. It's it's a, like a hard habit to break. You're like, wow, I'm so used to doing like a step and repeat or duplicate, da 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 da. So the one thing I really like, at least, once I do this in an old-fashioned way, then I see, okay, I can do this in a better way. <laughs> and after that, yeah. Uh, let me actually delete this for now. Oh, no. I will ungroup create. And actually, I will delete this and this. And I want rounded corners. Let's do 16 and let's do it without border and let's fill it with uh, no low contrast let's do something like that and now we can actually repeat create and so yeah we have 12 pixels between each of the element that's why yeah once you once you make this grid you basically can hover on spacing and adjust it because in the beginning, when I firstly used this feature, and I thought, wow, it's like spacing too between the elements, it's too big. But then you just hover and see, oh, I can adjust everything. So nice. Uh, let's actually make it a little bit lighter. So hopefully everybody gets that repeat grid. That's one of those things where like I want to see it in every app that I use is something like repeat grid, um, which is awesome. And again, it's all still tied back to that one element. I change the one element, it's gonna change all item, items in the grid. So, I prepared some icons in advance. Uh, music I listen to usually is DJ Phil's. <laughs> so it's spinning on the ones and twos right now, even though, oh, wow, never mind. <laughs> we have a DJ Gusbot. Maybe he has a, also a DJ name. I'm loving these icons, by the way. Again, my talented DJ friend. Star Crunch in the house. Love it. And still there are some hotkeys I don't know. Please forget me about, for example, I don't know why, but when it comes to alignment of group of elements, I just, I can't remember them. Oh, well, hey, your, your, your fingers have been dancing on the keyboard, so you're doing quite well with the shortcuts. And yeah, advice from myself. Learn hotkeys, all of that. Yeah. And practice. I'm lazy and I'm not doing that, but don't be me. <laughs> that is funny. Mm, uh, so, let's do this, this. Work your magic. I do like that font. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure about this one. I expect that our spectators will contribute to our art direction a little bit later. Right now, I just want to create some sort of feeling what I'm trying yeah, to build. Yeah, just kind of like knock, knock it, knock out a wireframe. What I like about this is like the thickness of the font is the same as the thickness of the stroke of the illustrations. So. I did some homework, but yeah. <laughs> I prepared a little bit, but might be better, I guess. Oops. Uh, I like it. And this is fascinating. So that might not even, I, maybe I know what you're doing. Are you setting this up to do a I want to scrolling? do a horizontal scroll. Okay. Yeah. And my end goal, hopefully if we will have enough time tomorrow actually to animate this. Yeah, into it. In to it. Mm. Uh, because it's outside. Let's group this. Uh, let me also create for colors. This could be, I think this could be a whole color palette. Absolutely. So I want to, oops. Uh, I want in the beginning to showcase different rooms that are 
group by color. So first one will be, for example, red, but the next collection of rooms might be, I don't know, multicolor or blue, or blue, blue rooms, or beige. anything. Okay. So it'll be a photo that's, you know, where most elements are red in this case. Exactly. Okay. So right now I want actually to showcase at least three photos inside of this block to, yeah, showcase that, hey, there are lots of different things. Uh, just a second. Maybe 16 is a lot. Let's do at least four for now. And do the same for this. Uh, let's do four as well. Mm. Nor brings up a good point. Great to have a function in the app to be able to place the model chosen on an uploaded image of the room by the user. So yeah, that's good functionality as well. Does that make sense? Uh, can you can you explain it to me? Yeah. So you like maybe you have a photo of the, the room that you're trying mm -hmm. to fill, and then you can select this sofa that I'm thinking about putting in there, can you put it on top of oh, the wow. photo? Actually, so. right now, this functionality exists in a variety of different e-commerce solutions, and basically it allows you with a augmented reality to preview exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely like the future. Again, I can guarantee that in 10 years, e-commerce will be completely different. Right now, it's kind of very old-fashioned, mm -hmm. and every e-commerce website is pretty much the same. Sofa, 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 sofa. But in 10 years, it will be, I guess, I believe a combination of VR, AR, and people will shop on the internet in a completely different way. Mm, interesting. Well, at least this is my prediction. Hopefully, I will be right. If not, you can always blame, blame me. me. Yeah, you blame me. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. And and some some companies are pushing the boundaries. So I'm actually kind of going through Wayfair, which actually has the augmented reality. Um, so I don't know if you know about that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick look. So again, comparing. Oh yeah, so it has a view in room. Yeah. You know, using 3D. So give me a second to yeah play get this with it away. And, Actually, I have this preparation. So, um, but this is also, just so you know what even Adobe is working on, we have something called Project Arrow, um, which will allow you to design what you want, but then visualize it. So it's augmented reality. Visualize it within a 3D space. Uh, whether it's a poster that you want to put on a wall, whether it's a display that you want to show off in a space, whether even it's, if it's just like, a cool work of art, like as if it's in a gallery, which I think galleries are gonna benefit a lot from augmented reality too. Because how do galleries currently work? You walk around, you have headphones, you hit number two, you know, to, to, that corresponds with the number on the wall or whatever. You're listening, but it's all audio. What if there was a visual, I love the visual augmented reality mm -hmm. on top of it. So. What I am doing right now, I see that there is half pixel. Be sure to remove it because, yeah. Your and you were, you were looking real right up there. Okay, cool. And because your engineers, you need to know, this is real life example. If they will see half pixels, they will start to make up their own values of different like spacing between elements and help them. Just be sure to use rounded values ideally divisible by, I don't know, by eight if you're using a pixel grid. And yeah, this will streamline mm -hmm. your designing and implementation process. And also keep in mind that engineers are your best friends. And if they will see that spacing is not like divisible by eight, for example, instead of 24, it will be 23. They will tell you, you know, you're, there might be a thing that might be better. Can you fix that? So you're kind of educating there how to collaborate, that's why, yeah, it's important. Yeah. Um, so Illustrator has something like, I know you were just kind of keeping an eye on the half pixels and stuff. Illustrator has a feature where you could like select everything and then place on whole pixel values, which is kind of fascinating. 
uh, if you happen to be using Illustrator. So I could easily see something maybe in the future, maybe maybe uh, XD has something like that. Um, or identify the uh, you know the elements that have half pixels or something. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I believe know. it will be like extremely cool. So I created this in advance. Let me. So this will be one group of. Now we need a little bit more space. Um. Yep. J fills. I don't, can I show this uh, augmented reality thing? Yeah, sure. Do you mind while you're kind yeah, of doing sure. that? So yeah. here I am. This is just Wayfair, by the way. So I found this sofa, by the way. I just kind of clicked in. Boop. Here's the sofa. And what it will have is, uh, again, right here, this button, uh, view in room in 3D, right? So again, this is just the augmented reality. Click right there. It accesses my camera. I might need to, it's going to recognize the surface. Sorry, my voice might disappear, but I'm going to step back and place it on the table, but you kind of get the idea of <laughs> the sofa. There it is. And that's that's when I decide that, you know what, maybe, maybe the sofa isn't going to be good on the table. Maybe <laughs> Some, it's not going to be good else. there. It's a little big for the table. And also notice that even when I was trying to Initially, I was trying to pinch and zoom it down. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it does it, but it like recognize. Does it recognize the the size of things? But you can't scale down the sofa, which is good because you're like, hey, they're like, this is the size it is. You can't scale this down to fit it through your exactly. doorway, and then it's not responsive sofas. But you get the idea. Either way, super fun. So. That's on Wayfair. And again, this is already something different comparing to our regular way of shopping. There are companies that are pushing the boundaries, and mm -hmm. it's amazing to see. Literally. It's exciting time to leave. That's right. So, uh, shop by item, 32 pixels, and let's actually focus on this thing. I want to have uh, some sort of menu item. Actually, it's 24 by 24. And this will be our one main navigation. Also, I want to have search another important thing. Uh, and oh, yeah. icons for shopping cart and probably icon. No, I guess shopping cart will be enough. 24. Another cool thing, all time I'm using that. Maybe I'm not that good at mathematics. So that's why I want to have 24 pixels from each side. I see that there are 52 pixels. So what I do, I just add those 52 minus 24. <clears throat> Take that. Yeah, and I'm not proud. you guys see that? I'm not proud. Maybe I should do that in my head, but at least no. th there are tools that save the day for me. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you did it in your head, I would still I would still second guess myself. I'm like, well, maybe I'll do the math. Like, maybe I'll do it right here, because I would, I would think I did. So you guys see that? He did some math operations within those uh, numerical text fields in XD. And so you want to make something twice the size? You know, asterisk two. There you have it. I use it yeah, all, right. all the time, to be honest. Come on now. It will do your taxes for you if you want it to. It is that good. <laughs> uh, Love it. So let me use some content. I By the way, more of our software does it than people realize. Because Illustrator will do it. Photoshop will do it. You want to make a document twice its size. Multiply two. You could do you could do strings, so you multiply two plus fifty. Like you could do that, you could get crazy. That's why I say you could do your taxes. Um, you can't really do your taxes. We don't want to be responsible for your taxes. We just want to be responsible for things looking good. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, Shift Command M. Let's learn this together. So I'm going to use mask. Okay, selecting those two shapes. Did you already make it? Yep. How did you, did you do a shortcut? Shift, Command, M. 
Shift Command M. So yeah. Uh, again, have two objects selected. Let's and learn things together. And actually, let's. Daria, you know about it, make uh, doing add and subtract and different math operations, and you didn't tell us till now. Uh, let's do four pixels for our. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like how you're using the. Um, sort of the, the layers panel for selecting things. Because I, th I end up doing that as well. When you have too many things stacked one on, on top of the next, or just to be kind of aware of what's selected, look at your layers panel and it will tell. Especially as you get more complex with like um, uh, repeat grid and then maybe grouped items within that, who knows? Just help out, helps out a lot. A lot. So actually I don't like this one. Uh, let me. Do we have anything in this one? Daria, we appreciate you. I'm, of course, just, just messing with you. But I'm into it. Boom. Uh, um, um, when you design, are you usually listening to something or. Yeah, but I prefer, I have weird taste, so I prefer to listen to chill music when there are no words and like very basic sounds. Just, yeah, just because some beats, just some. It allows me to go into this like deep thinking mindset and. Yeah, I agree. This is how I do it, but well, people are different. Everyone is like, oh, I'm listening. So another place for me to do math. We have 245 pixels from the bottom, but actually I want probably 32 pixels. So I'm going to do minus 245 plus 32. Enter. Boom. That's awesome. That's perfect. Uh, and yeah, let's finally drop some you wanted content. 32 pixels like underneath that very last image. Very cool. <laughs> I agree though, like I usually listen to music that doesn't have words. Like sometimes words get a little distracting. Unless exactly. I know the song really well and I just don't have to think about it, but don't distract me. Just give me some some cool cool beats like DJ Phil's <laughs> mixing it up. Sometimes he, he dips into jazz a little bit, which is where he has to pull out all these brass instruments over there and start playing them. So we might dip into a little bit of jazz. Um, so. so let's pick content. So we have bedroom. This is image for bedroom. We need something for living room. This one looks great. And the next one will be kitchen. Let me find an actual, do I have a kitchen image here? Uh, so just a second. I prepared additional images. This hmm. is your house, right? Unfortunately, no. Uh, I want to say. Come on, man. Just work with me here. Yeah. Just be like, yeah. Yes. This, that guitar. Oh, yeah. I rock out on a guitar. Actually, I can play a guitar. You can? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You you seem like the type of individual that has like lots of talents. I like, would, I would like to say that, or but, maybe you don't. But so I did a <laughs> I'm lot. I'm trying of, to compliment you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I I'm just shy and like modest. Uh, I yeah. See, I uh, tried a lot of crazy things. I jumped with parachute for 15 times. Oh really? Yeah, I owned skydiving. A, yeah, I owned a sport bike. Uh, oh yeah. And all of the crazy things that made my mother very unhappy. And she said like, can you please promise me for this birthday not to do anything like crazy? And I said, yeah, and bought a motorcycle on that day. Oh, but <laughs> yeah. But yeah, right now again. That's I, mom's job is to be like worried for their son. I get it. But motorcycles are also dangerous. Yes. 
This wasn't recent, was it? Uh, this was like five years ago. But after that, once I sold it, actually moving from Ukraine to the United States, mm. I said, no, I'm not going to buy a motorcycle here, so don't worry about that. You know what you need to get now is an electric bike. This is like very trendy here, and also it like, simplifies commute here. Yeah. If you will go outside in San Francisco, this is such a hot topic, and like mm -hmm. everyone's like doing their last mile of traveling using different vehicles. Basically, in San Francisco, you can see people are traveling using electric skateboards, one sort of one wheel thing. The one wheel. Yeah. yeah. Different, like, there are it's like. It's just crazy. It's, it's kind of like, crazy. You can. It's almost comical. You can stop on a street and observe, and you will see like <laughs> 20 so different yeah. devices, and you're like, this is the future. <laughs> That's it. Oh, one guy has one one uh, regular bike, then the one wheel, then a guy has three wheels, then then one guy with a big wheel, the little wheel, you know that, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, 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 I saw that. <laughs> I oh, is there like, a guy? I'm not surprised in San Francisco. I'm just curious, what's, what are like even those things? What are the benefits? What are like... I don't yeah. know. <laughs> So, uh -huh. ah, Claude, uh, Claude has the best bike ever. He has a Super 73. It's an electric bike. Look it up. Are you into electric bikes? Yep. Totally. Mm. So excited about it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hoverboard. Yeah, I knew it. So Maybe one. someday even just like, it's not even you, but it's the sidewalk moving and you just hop on. So I'm locking the size of the image to keep proportion the same. This is very important. And in the same time, half pixels for the image is absolutely fine because I will use mask. And yeah, yeah it's which is the right size. Yeah, for, for image, it will work. And where is my kitchen it's here less than 20 minutes for uh, to get your designs in and we will give you some feedback and we'll promise to be to be gentle and oh. I hope I don't know about Stan here he's vicious you seen this guy ah oh, he's so vicious I review so many Look portfolios oh, you right do? Now. yeah because I'm again doing hiring and he's hiring for the last Two months I interviewed probably, I reviewed definitely more than 200 portfolios and interviewed 30, 40 oh, yeah. designers. Uh, go full screen with your uh, <gasps> Please excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, I was looking for different images. Please excuse me, so. Mm -hmm. So I remember this shift command M. Same for this. And same for this. That's right. Voodoo Val is going to live her full fantasy when we have serious hoverboards. She's gonna hover around like static shock. She's gonna wear sunglasses at night, wear lots of wet leather. I can see you doing most of that right now, by the way. <laughs> so now I need to pick content for this style. Mid-century, coastal, and boho. So mid-century, what looks like mid-century? Mm, this Truth. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, this might be mid-century. Are you just talking to yourself? All the time. Keep it coming. We like to hear where you're coming from. Um, Voodoo Val woke up today. She got dressed in full leather, uh, cape, uh, sunglasses, maybe a, some sort of headpiece, maybe that has some awesome horns, and then just walked across her bedroom to her laptop. <laughs> Sounds but like she got fully dressed like a superhero because she's showing up. She's showing up for work. I like it. Just like Benjamin Edwards. What's up? Hey guys, good to see you here. Benjamin, let us know where you're from. I always like to say hello. I recently got a Super 73 bike though. Oh, that's why. That's yeah. Like you're excited about. Totally excited about. Voodoo Val, the super villain. She dresses up as a super villain, but she, really she's the nicest person ever. But looking at her, 
She's got these platform heels on, you know? Ooh. Just working out her laptop, though, by the way. <laughs> and uh, with yeah. her lightsaber. <laughs> I'm picking the last. Oops. You always enable this lock to keep the proportions. Actually, I need this size. So this is the last piece. Mm. Ah, Benjamin Edwards from Florida, where it's uh, it's so nice out. Probably a nice 73 degrees. No, I have no idea. Probably not, uh, I don't know, leather pants probably don't sell well in Florida this time of year, I could imagine. Just a guess. And, and yes, Val, I think you're a superhero. I like how you're showing just the edge of that. It's all you need, there's more there. And eventually, like maybe tomorrow, we can see that uh, animate and everything. Yeah, so all the time you're doing different scrolls, just help your users to understand that there is something. And yeah, showcase them that there is an opportunity for you to scroll. So this is our Y initial screen. Let me actually do some magic here. I have... Eight pixels, 24, okay, I will do pixels. So I prepared some icons as well. We need search, menu, and shopping cart. Let's use those. And I'll have to show um, where you can get some free assets. Uh, so Jamal brings up a good question. How can you, um, just in terms of submitting and design, it's the challenge tab. So go ahead and you'll see chat. Go over to challenge and uh, there's a starter file you can use, but essentially what you're doing is you're creating a music creation app for oops, a brand using design systems. And yeah, be sure to participate in all of those things because a lot of people, I don't know, ignore them, but this is like, such a great opportunity for you to showcase and to practice. And it's just important. A lot of, there are a lot of talented designers, but you need to find a way to showcase how great your skills are. And yeah, basically there are two rules. Do something great, always put it in front of other people all the time. Because you need to create some sort of presence online. Other people need to know that, hey, you're a, you a great person, mm -hmm. find the way that works for you. Some of the people do speaking engagements, something mm -hmm. like that, they prefer to speak to the audience. For example, I consider myself as a little bit introvert person and I, it's probably not for me. I tried it for several times, it worked, I guess, hopefully. Yeah. But, sure it did. yeah, but still, if you like to write, write about design, but all of those things, they allow you and your resume to stand out from the crowd because nowadays with all of these design sprints, design thinking, the overall design process is pretty much the same and you need something to stand out. So yeah, just, okay. just think about that. Especially for you, Stan, you said you had to reviewed, what, 200 portfolios in the past, in the yeah, past month or so. So I like, would say. yeah, how, how can you stand out? And again, it's doing something that's probably gonna be a little bit different, or at least just get your stuff out there like you're saying, get good work out there, have people review it. And I would just say get stuff out there. Definitely. Because maybe you don't, nobody starts out good necessarily but get your stuff out there in front of people and you're, you're gonna be good before you know it. So, welcome Eduardo's Brazilian, yes. Hello from Brazil. Gotta love Brazil. So this is our initial functionality. Let's adjust some space in here, probably 16. And 
Second. Oh, I kind of wanted to show some resources too. Uh, I guess you can take my screen because I'm just like pushing pixels right now. Nothing exciting, just making sure that everything is pixel perfect. Uh, so yeah, so just a couple things, cause just kind of recap what you've been doing. Let's not forget about like repeat grid right up here. Click right there, boom. All the things you can shop for. These are all tied together, so if obviously when we change it, it's gonna change. Uh, then the next thing you wanna do is like get assets. So you can go to file, get UI kits. Um, there's like Apple iOS, which you saw in Stan's computer, had like the battery power, time, uh, Wi-Fi, stuff like that. Uh, but we can go down to more UI kits as well. This will just link out to a page full of resources uh, that you can kind of peruse. So I just kind of encourage you to do that. And uh, even right here, we have an e-commerce um, uh, asset that you can go ahead and access. So if you do think that, hey, maybe somebody else created this sort of basic format or something, they probably did. You can kind of stand on their shoulders and uh, make something awesome from it. So I encourage you to do that. Here's the e-commerce, let's open that up. If you don't have the fonts, it'll ask you for the fonts. Okay, this one seems pretty good. But check it out, here's all this e-commerce. Look at this, zoop, isn't that nice? Fantastic. Oh, I love this too. Also, I would Stan, say- Stan, do you like this, by the way, doing the blur? Yeah, definitely, right? because it's like just a great idea from usability perspective. In interaction design, you showcase that this menu is connected to the actually content you see behind. Mm -hmm. And it will be just weird if you will see this full screen without seeing like the content behind it. And who knows, maybe it will even update the content behind in real time. Ooh. So you will establish the connection between the elements behind and actually the values you are entering inside of those footers. Yeah, that'd be awesome to see that real, those real time updates. So yeah, just kind of wanted to point that out. And of course, um, you know, there are other resources out there, like Noun Project. I don't know if you use like the Noun Project or any other, so, other little, like just for like icons and stuff. I, use anything like that. I would say that it's a really good practice and I would encourage everyone to use some of those things. If you are starting design with a blank canvas, I would say you're doing something wrong. Okay. Because let's agree, all the time there will be different buttons, all the time. All the time there will be some sort of different input fields and you can create exactly your own some sort of wireframe kit, mm -hmm. save it somewhere and it will allow you to streamline the ideation stage when you need to generate as much ideas as possible. Like, mm -hmm. let's take a look. Buttons are always here. Yeah. Back buttons, uh, different menus, different social icons. You just need those all the time so Save your time, create some sort of your own personal UI kit. Yeah, exactly. And you could do, you know, maybe you do use this as a starting point. This is the one we're just reviewing. But like, yeah, use this as a starting point. I love how some of these are set up. So I don't, you're probably using like uh, some of the various um, symbols and components. So, so. specifically for this, uh, let's call this exercise. I decided not to create anything. I mean, in advance, but we will do that quickly. Tomorrow I will create a few components that we will reuse. Okay, into it. But basically that's what I'm doing here is like, you know, downloading an asset that I can then change. Obviously I'm manipulating these colors over here. It's gonna change it everywhere. So let's just do zero. Here's all the screens and Let's just right click, edit color, and we can see all of them change. So we can drag that and make that red, does the obvious. So anyways, yeah. just fun resources. Uh, oh, what's the best course for UX UI design? Uh, Jamal's saying he's currently taking IDF right now. What's IDF? Ooh, can we do a quick search? Yeah, <laughs> this is exactly what I was gonna do. <laughs> Less than five minutes for to get your designs in. Oh, Interactive Design Foundation. Mm. 
Let me. So I don't know. I don't know if there is a. Is there? I don't know if anybody can say definitively this is the best course. Exactly. You know? Because so first of all, every person is different. Every person has their own skill set. For example, when it. UI UX means so many things. It might be product thinking. So how you deal with different metrics and all of the stuff. Or how you tackle the problem in general. It might be interaction design, how you create something for different devices, how you create flows, all of the edge cases and the stuff. Copywriting. Surprisingly, a lot of people are don't think that this is part of UI UX, but actually words are very important. And I even would encourage everyone to start with defining the copy you want to showcase. And only after that, build actually buttons and all of the stuff. And finally, here comes the visual design. And even inside of visual design, there are so many things you can learn. Typography, different layouts, color theory. Mm -hmm. So, just be sure that you want, um, yeah, try to understand what you want to learn. This is number one step. And from there, you can explore different options. So I'll be honest, I finished a lot of different courses on different topics from completely different organizations. All of them are great. But at the same time, just remember that course, this is like a shortcut. Somebody invested time to find the best practices and they're delivering to you those best practices. So mm -hmm. you can get the same result on your own. You can yeah, repeat all of those mistakes and come up with your own best solution, but it will take more time. So the, the main thing, I believe, to be successful when you're dealing with courses is exactly to learn to know what you want to achieve, number one. And second one, when once you're aware of your desired outcome, be sure that you have enough motivation because if you think that, okay, I will buy this most expensive course mm -hmm. and after that I will know everything, no, you're wrong. You need to invest a lot of effort, your own personal effort. So be sure mm -hmm. that you have that effort and like, yeah, motivation, better to say. To maturation, mature m m m motivation, motivation. Yeah, Sorry motivation. About that. Motivation. It's, no, it's like my Eastern European <laughs> English. So we have, we have. Oh wow! I heard so, a little red heat in there. Is that, yeah, isn't that yeah, a movie? Yeah, red heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a little red heat in your accent. No. <laughs> so we have two minutes. Less than two minutes. Uh, damn, time flies. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, less than two minutes for the design feedback. I'm kind of like reviewing some of those now. Um, just as an FYI, I'm kind of getting those prepped. So to be honest, I'm done. Uh, oh yeah? Yeah, I expected to do a little bit more, but... Maybe... Oh, love it, Noor, great. Thank you so much, great, great resources. And we appreciate just everybody chiming in on this. Principles of a di design, principle of elements. Like, and these are kind of soft skills too. Like. To some degree, I mean, I don't know. Are there, um, there's principles. There's not like a lot of rules and those rules are meant to be broken. At least with design, I say. Uh, this is actually a very broad topic. I believe this is more about the organization defining your team principles and values. Uh, yeah. If you think that there is a question you're asking all the time, for example, like, should we go with like four pixels corners or two pixel corners, or they should be like straight without any rounding, just document that and you can call that this is my principle and hey, everyone else should follow these things. Mm -hmm. Right now we call this design systems. <laughs> so actually we are eight seconds. And I guess you will do the review. Yeah, I'm gonna go through uh, some design feedback. Yeah, but no, that's good. It's it's funny. Like, I don't know. We can talk about that all day long. Um, so let's just kind of recap. Let's jump back over here. You can see uh, us and the challenge right over here. Um, adapt uh, the design of your music 
creation app for a related brand using design systems and components. So there's a starter file that they have, mm -hmm. and this has been all about design systems this week. We're actually, this is the seventh day um, as part of this uh, XD Daily Creative Challenge. But mainly we just want people to kind of get involved. I'm well aware of this challenge because my wife is participating in Ooh. this one. And okay. she's she's creating a voice prototype, and yesterday she was yelling at home like, drum, drum, drum. <laughs> and I That's was like, funny. what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> That is funny. Oh, that's good. So she's participating in this. Um, so yeah, we can check out the starter file. You, you're coming from a little bit of knowledge of this, which is good. Uh, sorry. Let's get back in here. This was the e-commerce. Sorry about that. Let me just open up the... There we go. So this is just going to give you an idea of the template which you may or may not be aware of. So here's uh, just kind of talking about the different challenges and the latest files. These are their assets they can, they can work with, but this is the design system. Music creation app. This is challenge day seven is where we're at. Um, mm. So again, adult branded, child branded. So adapt the design of your music creation app for related brand using design systems and components. But basically, we're going to just review whatever we have in the design feed feedback channel mm -hmm. on Discord. All right, so let's kind of switch over. So again, that's the ideally the challenge. I don't know if people have had a chance to like really do this because this is also a lot of work. So we have some day five stuff. Um, let's kind of go right in here. Let's just take a look at this. Is that's actually still day five. Um, but still some cool examples that probably need to, you know, we probably need to review. So since there's only this many, we'll just kind of review a couple of these yeah, if you don't mind. Do um, uh, design and prototype 2 plus artboard experiment experience of your choosing as you design, convert reusable elements into components, which are now what like symbols were are now components. So this is cool, uh, music creation app, uh, starting out with different instruments. It's kind of hard to see some of this stuff. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna just jump back over to day five. Edit the sound. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell from that screen recording, to be honest with you, or the, uh, from the uh, s this image. I don't have a lot to go on. So, hmm. time to say. Go ahead. Apply all the time. Apply, test your skills, push yourself, push your personal boundaries. I'll give you an example. Some time ago, inside of our company Canvas, we applied for San Francisco Design Week Awards. This is like the biggest event in the city, basically for seven days. Yeah, actually even it's going one. on right now. Yeah, exactly, it's going right now. For seven days, designers from San Francisco and actually all over the world, they create different events, there are a lot of different design exhibitions, and in addition, there are there is San Francisco Design Week Award. Actually, it's like 12 different categories, and some time ago, some time ago, uh, we agreed with the teammates that, hey, let's participate in this San Francisco Design Week Award. In the beginning, we were kind of a little bit skeptical because, like, last year, huge companies won those awards. Google, mm -hmm. Square, Lyft, you name those. But we decided to participate. And, yeah, basically one month ago, I got this wonderful email. I still remember it. Hey, congrats, you won. You won? Exactly. If you will go to... A self design week, or if you will search, and there is like these awards. So, we prepared a submission in our own time, our application applied for urban mobility category. And last week, we went to this huge ceremony to receive our like personal award. This is like such a great experience. Yeah, and I don't know if you want to pull it up on your laptop too, uh, or, or whatever. Yeah, just uh, let's. Let's do that. And we do have a couple going on here that I, we can review. 
Uh, San Francisco design. So yeah, this is this event. Lots of things going on during this week when it comes to design. Let me do this full screen. So, open mobility <coughs> canvas. Ooh. So you're the winner of a. Yeah. What award is it? Uh, it's, like... it's actually a fancy small thing from glass and it says canvas. So this is basically the story. This is our small team. Again, we are not a huge company. We don't have like crazy budget to do things, but you just need to know that just apply for everything you can do. And yeah, you will, you will win someday. Yeah, I mean, I guess, again, if you, you're definitely gonna not win if you don't apply. Exactly. Because you are thinking, ah, we're probably not gonna get this. There's all these other big companies entering this. You entered your project and you won. Yeah, you need to brag about yourself, man, seriously. Where is that thing? So this is our Instagram and yeah, it's small. Let me zoom in. So this is our award. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Nice. And this is us. Happy and funny. So it's team of four. Unfortunately, Kevin was. Uh, he was he gone. Was, no, wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. Was he? It looks creepy, but he was on a vacation, and yeah, we decided like to showcase Show his photo. photo. Yeah, <laughs> it's like still a team effort, and he contributed a, a lot. So again, this is like a very huge award, but you just need to apply in order to win those things, and you need to test your skills all the time. So. Don't be afraid. Even if you think that, ah, it looks like I can do better. Well, try to do it better, but still showcase it. Yeah, for sure. Just get involved, I'm into it, which is exactly what people are doing as part of this uh, daily creative challenge. So we'll take a look at some of these if we could switch over to my screen. Uh, even some that might not be part of the challenge right now. So like uh, Spherex says, but I think this is really cool. Just a screen recording, which you can do in XD. We'll go full screen, sorry. Boop. Here we go. Um, so this is making drinks. You might have these different uh, juices or whatever. Components. Go in, select pineapple, small, medium, large. Oh, it actually is wirelessly connected, but I'm loving this stuff. Oh, wow. Isn't that fun? That is pretty awesome. So you're controlling this drink maker from your phone, from your, sorry, from your watch. So I would say the execution is like really good. I really like all of the micro animations because basically they connect elements between each other. It's like, ooh, this mm -hmm. is like really good. Sets, I love this filling right yeah, there. Yeah, sets expectations on time. Mm -hmm. Boom, add eyes. Perfect animation to showcase elements, adding. I would say this is an amazing job. Yeah, it's really great. Um, awesome. Let's just kind of scrub through. Yep. I would say you don't even, in some cases, do you really need glass size? Does that need to be there? Uh, I don't, I don't know. So I we don't know the full context. Maybe there is like, huge need in that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, it's kind of, this is already self-explanatory. I love this design right here. Like design-wise, I think it's like on, on, on point. Yeah. So, wow. Sometimes you need to use text labels, but I agree after like second use, definitely you will understand that, oh yeah, this mm -hmm. is glass size. It's perfect, perfectly explained. Let's take a look at uh, Alex design. Uh, let's check this out. So this might be more along the lines of the challenge today. Just, let's actually just take a look at this. You hit play, and it's oh, going wow. through these different notes. I don't know if we can actually hear something, but we'll pretend like we can. Huh? Um, cool, would you like to save this melody? Perfect. I would almost say that like one thing that could happen is like these, um, the keys could be darker because it's hard to tell that this one's actually pressed. 
don't you think? Yeah, I agree. So I would increase that contrast. But overall, oh guys, you make me look terrible with my design skills. <laughs> You're creating like that's yeah. The good the worse he feels, the better you are. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I totally agree with you that. So very nitpicky though. Very. I mean, look at the highlights. Like some of these highlights right here. Like all this stuff is awesome. I don't know music, so I don't know what a ruler's doing here. <laughs> I think that's the scale. So I know how to play guitar. Have no idea about the piano. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let us talk about. We'll give you our expert opinion on playing the piano for this app. But no, I think it's awesome. I want to add more to this. We reviewed this. XD gets added. Boom. Boom. This is the badge of recognition. Yeah. Like top mark. Uh, Beck Nelson. Let's, actually, let's click right here and see what we got. Oh, yeah. Design systems. Beck's doing great. Actually going through day four. Oh, yeah, this is great. And again, just kind of clicking on that latest screen. I was looking for this one right here. Oh, sorry. I was looking for this one right here. Design icons and buttons for the, this is actually day two. I think we're all over the map with some of this. But I will say that uh, she's done a great job so far, right? This Back in terms of the header. Uh, the jobs, the different sort of uh, each challenge. Like if you saw this, you know, come across your desk, this would m make you take pause and say, this person really has done a lot of work, right? What yeah. do you think? I believe that putting effort, this is like one of the best indicators to showcase that you really care about this thing and like you're not just like randomly creating lots of things, but hey, I spent some time, I invested mm -hmm. effort into this and this looks really good. Yeah. Uh, probably it's up to personal preference, but I would say that that red color sometimes like super dark and okay. Yeah, I don't know what vibe you want, what sense of or like the feeling you want to create with this particular brand. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, what are you trying to say with this red? You pick these reds. Like, what's your reasoning behind it? I would say it works perfectly fine for jazz application because always if you're listening to jazz, it's like that fashion, red, dark mm -hmm. red, cafe, and yeah, the mm -hmm. place. So works fine for that. But if you want to create, I don't know, something about electronic dance music, probably it should be a different mm -hmm. color scheme. But yeah, this is just my personal opinion. I don't know the whole context of thinking behind this solution, but my opinion looks great. Yeah. And also I really like that uh, there is a keyboard showcased because this is very important. Yeah. In real life, you need to think about all of the different bars you have inside of your phone, all of the like how the keyboard will look like. Mm -hmm. What about the call to action? I mean, next button, is mm -hmm. it on the screen? Yeah, all of those minor moments actually create, I call this bulletproof design when you think about all of the edge cases. And yeah, I yeah. just really appreciate that. That is really good. Uh, Eva really likes the, the red and black, makes it look very serious. Um, uh, yeah. Mm. It does look pretty. I mean, it does look pretty good. We can kind of debate the color, and I think color evokes some emotion. Um, and just be fully aware of it. Even when you're adding gradients, I think at least current trends kind of show that subtle gradients are gonna look much more professional than more extreme gradients. This starts to feel a little bit dated when yeah. you have such a, when you're going from such a red to such a dark, almost black. So when it comes to gradients, be more subtle, like scale it back, um, even for some of these icons. Be a little more subtle and it will just add so much to it. Also, it's about consistency because I believe that some buttons are using gradients, some I just like That's the true. same color and just a question of consistency. Yeah. Yeah, like what's the reason behind these being different? Was one's pressed, one not pressed? You know, those situations. I don't want to spend too much time on this one. It was actually could have already been reviewed on day two or so. Uh, but we have a couple. Oh, here's why do they? Well, I encourage everyone to apply and to showcase. <laughs> uh, 
Let's take a look at this one. Catalina. Let's see how far Catalina. Oh, I love the colors. Oh, that's nice. Day two. Oh, yeah. So again, working through day two. This is really good. I would offer up my same advice for these, even these gradients. It's almost, I'd ease back that gradient a little bit. But my initial reaction to this color was like, yes, like this. I was like, this is this is good. Doesn't it feel nice? It's like leafed a little bit pinky. Yeah, I like the little pink, little pinkiness. <laughs> Taskbar, app icon, logotype. Like these, like even this looks good. Like this is even good without the gradient. Don't you think? Yeah, I agree. But right now, hey, gradients, this is, they are back. Mm -hmm. And I think they're back, they're just back in a more subtle way. Like, again, just, I don't know. Like, Hulu's an exception. So if you look at Hulu, Hulu's branding is all these fun yeah, gradients. Yeah. But, you know, it's just the way you use them. <sighs> don't mind how slow this is, DRK. Uh, but love some feedback. Well, we'd love to give you some feedback. Bird scooter, click. Oh, clicking on these hot spots here. Panning around. I'm loving the motion, like all the screens involved here. It's kind of cool. So the only one uh, I can give is a suggestion. Always be sure that you meet some basic accessibility guidelines. And in the beginning, I totally missed all of those spot areas because it just blends into the image. And yeah, make them pop out, somehow make them more visible and probably bigger, considering that this is iPhone X screen. Mm -hmm. Those are super small and let's imagine if two will be next to each other. Yeah, just be sure that there yeah. is like 40 pixels square area around everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite frankly, you don't know what type of, what color background this is going to be on. It could be right, bright, could be dark. That's why I like they did put two different colors in there, which is smart, but make those pop. Yeah. So. But wow, the prototype is actually amazing. Yeah, that's like serious uh, transitions and stuff. I'm also curious about this, like, card shape. Mm -hmm. uh, like, what's the story behind mm -hmm. it? I thought that in the beginning it's like stocked cards, and that's why it has this perspective view, but yeah, it reminds me of Star Wars movie. Oh, Catalina's here. Thank you so much. Yeah, so like, what's the purpose behind these these notches right here? Are they, are they necessary? I would say, I mean, I don't mind it. I think it could add some visual interest if that's what you're trying to do. If everything's so boring, then take a notch out of a corner or a curve or something and do something interesting. Um, otherwise, we don't know if this harkens back to the brand somehow, or who knows what. Yeah. Just be sure always to have a, re a reasoning behind, because during your portfolio presentation, if you will be, I don't know, attending different interviews, this is the question that somebody will ask you, hey, why, why, why you decided to go this specific way? What's the thinking process? Please explain. Yeah. And if you will say, oh, I don't know, it's, it's a bad a red, answer. red yeah. flag. Yeah. And Robbie brings up a good point. Maybe you're trying to mimic perspective or something, but whatever whatever it is, like be prepared to have an answer. You know, which is good. But it's fun, like it's simple. Yeah, it's also I saw there was a question about what I'm looking in product designers. I will tackle this question in the end of the conversation in case if we will have some time, or otherwise I will remember and yeah, I will start answering this tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> So I thought this is something we just reviewed. I know. Yeah, it is. Oh, um, maybe there is like a full key study. The bird discovery page. Yeah, we kind of already reviewed this. So yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Good. Boom. Appreciated. Go back out. This is the last one we'll review again. This is kind of like the latest. Um, wow. 
so yeah, this XD stuff's harder because it's like creating multiple projects, like multiple screens. It's a whole thing. This, I love this already. Yeah, this is exactly what I referred before when you're creating like this electric music and mm -hmm. you you're using like colors to express that this like pop green electric green let's call yeah. it that way i kind of feel this vibe of this application and i would say that brandon is doing a great job here mm -hmm. make my music into it into the black and white photo into the this pop of color um again kind of dealing with like a design system simpler is always better don't over design it this color might be kind of hard to see, which is why I also like that you made it larger, but let me know your thoughts. So I'm looking on the right screen. It's really hard to read this copy mm -hmm. on those buttons. So yeah, contrast check all the time. Be sure that, yeah, the labels are visible. In the same time, I like the wipe overall of this application. Sometimes I know that you can, well, I'm not a big fan of reducing accessibility to follow some style, but sometimes it's, yeah, <laughs> the only one choice. You're like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so it's cool, yeah. Definitely thicken up this, like I love this big full, bold font. Like this look is super cool. Like this light gray text thinner, this is big and bold and it's in your face, kind of like they're fat beats or whatever. Um, and then get bold right there like you're saying, you know? And in this case, like does it really matter that maybe this is harder to see? Doesn't really matter because this isn't, isn't crucial information, you know? What does it mean? I have no <laughs> idea, it's listening. It's trying to recognize guitar and then recognize the riff from the guitar oh. and giving you those results. I would even like to see like a subtle, I don't know, maybe that's me telling trends. Maybe does it go to a lighter yellowish green to a darkish green? Do you see a gradient here? I kind of see a gradient here. I would say also, I still like the idea that there is this chart because basically it creates this understanding, oh, it's actually listening and looks like it recognizes some sounds, so. Yeah, that's what I think they're conveying, which is good. No, super cool. I wanna leave time for you to talk about your advice on uh, product management, is that what you're gonna start uh, So it was like what I am looking for in product designers as far as I remember. Can we scroll up a little uh, bit? No, but I can scroll up right here. Can be very meta. Uh, it was somewhere. For start, ah, along with the plan, what do you look for when hiring a designer? Uh, so, this is actually a very deep question. I already mentioned this before that every hiring manager is looking for something specific, but usually they're looking for skills that they that will complement overall team performance. Let's say inside of Canvas design team, we have four technical skills, product thinking, copywriting, interaction design, and visual design. Basically, I rate each designer on this different skills and we have five levels inside of each skill for example my visual designs are le is level one which means i am not the best visual designer in this world but there is like a lot of improvement for me but overall i know that my design team is very strong in product thinking but for visual design we would like to find somebody who can complement our like weaknesses and help us to grow mm -hmm. that's why Actually, good companies will showcase in the beginning that, hey, we have some gap in, in like product thinking, for example, and we are looking for a person who is like strong in product thinking. So that's why as a candidate, you need to ask this question, what exactly they are looking for? And based on their answer, try to showcase specific skills or experience, yeah, to say, hey, I did this like very complex, I don't know, project which perfectly outlines and showcases my product thinking skills. That's why you should consider us. But it doesn't guarantee that the next designer I will look for, 
I will try to search again product thinking. No, by that time probably I will search for different skill set. That's why all the time try to analyze the job description to identify what they are looking for. Or just in case, if it's not there inside of job description, you will have like different calls with recruiters and with your hiring manager. Be sure to ask this question. This is all of the questions are good, but this one is very important and it will allow you again to showcase your skills in the best possible way. And as I mentioned before in the beginning of this conversation, soft skills are still like the king of all skills. Yeah. And part of those soft skills is like really just like knowing what you're good at, where your strengths and weaknesses are, because at the end of the day, you want to be a good fit. So not getting a job is could definitely be more of a blessing. Yeah. Right. Just be honest with yourself, where you're at, with your potential employer and all that. Right. Awareness is very important. And a lot of companies interview for awareness. Lots of those different questions like, hey, where do you want to be in three years from today? Yeah, how you exp you see your future, all of those questions, or tell me about the situation when you failed. All of those questions are trying to analyze your self-awareness skills. So be sure to practice those as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just be honest with yourself. And we just appreciate everybody joining in this conversation with us. And of course, with Stan today, getting your expert opinion. Since you are hiring people and you look at so many resumes and portfolios and all that stuff, we just appreciate all your advice and, uh, and your design. So I can't wait to kind of dive into more of this tomorrow as we continue it, right? Yeah, so first of all, thanks for having me. We will have some time tomorrow. And yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. I will like contribute more to this design and will actually showcase more examples of responsive. Tomorrow this will be actually the main topic of my yeah session. Yeah. And you have you have the foundation laid, so it's gonna get it's gonna be super fun. So thank you so much for joining us today with Stan. He's gonna be back tomorrow and actually we'll be live tomorrow morning. Uh, 9 a.m. with Kathleen, the Photoshop Daily Challenge. But all day tomorrow, we're going to be live streaming, so thanks so much for hanging out with us. Come back tomorrow. You going to come back tomorrow? I guarantee. Yay! He's coming back tomorrow, everybody! <laughs> thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Goodbye.